my shirt there, isn't it? Just so yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV. Back with another Players Lounge. And today, got another special guest, man. Former Arsenal player, Justin Hoyt. Respect for coming on, bro, during this lockdown. Um, I think you're in better surroundings than us, man. You're over there in Miami at the moment. Yeah, that's things, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with this new team in, in Miami, I'm out here. Uh, obviously stuck inside and waiting for our season um, to begin again. So, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, the weather's nice and um, conditions are kind of better. But, um, yeah, we're just, you know, slowly waiting for, for the season to resume so we can at least get back to training um, first mm. before we start games again. What's, what's lockdown like over there? Like, how strict is it in, in Miami? No, it's very strict. I mean, we was in curfew um, wow. for the most part. Um, you had to be in your house by, I'd say, nine o'clock. Um, yeah. You know, and we weren't back out, allowed out till six. He was only allowed out probably once a day. Um, and yeah. yeah, everything was closed, really. You know, hotels, everything was yeah. kind of closed. So, no, it was, it's been very strict. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm always in, inside anyway, so uh, yeah, yeah. you know, lockdown for me was 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 tough. Um, you know, being by yourself without your family, but uh, I'm getting by. Um, and now we're at the stage where you know a few more things are opening. Uh, yeah. So that's that's a good sign. When are you hoping to resume training then over there? Um, I think we should be training within the next week or two. Um, I think mm. that's what uh, the rumors are. I mean. Um, parks are opening and you know training places are open so I think we're just waiting for the all clear for um, where we train to be open and, and once it's open we can start training and then uh, once the stadium is available to play we'll, we'll start back the season straight away. You see obviously over here in like they're having a lot of debate about the Premier League and certain players are saying you know they don't feel it's safe like have you got any concerns yourself with, with returning to playing? Um, for me, it's, it's, as long as everyone is safe, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's your own personal uh, views on it, um, mm. how you feel, um, and you know your own body kind of thing, and it's like, um, for me personally, I feel fine, I haven't got any symptoms, I don't feel sick, I don't feel any, anything, um, so for me, I feel like I could go back and, and train and play, um, mm. you know, but... You know, some other people might have um, something against it, but my own opinion is, you know, I feel fine. And as long as it's safe to do so, um, not just for me, but for everyone else. And um, the safety aspect for teams and players and officials is, is OK. Then I think, you know, there's no reason why we can't, um, you know, resume. But I think it should be down to the player to decide mm. um, what they want to do, really. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's your own body and your own personal um, safety. Yeah, of course, man. Let's talk your time at Arsenal. Um, I saw you play a few times for Arsenal, actually, back in the day. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, what was your time like at Arsenal, man? Obviously, you was there during the Invincible season and, you know, with all them great players and you was a good yeah. player yourself, man. I mean, you was a right-back. Um, uh, am I right in saying you was a right-back? Yeah, I played right-back, yeah, sometimes at left-back. Um, no, I really, I, to be honest, I really enjoyed um, my time at Arsenal. I mean, you know, having been an Arsenal supporter as a kid, you know, watching Ian Wright and some of the other, you know, players then at the time, it was like, you know, all my dream was was to play for Arsenal. Um, mm. Being from the academy, that's all you wanted to do is play for the first team. And I got to achieve that. So, mm. um, you know, some fans will have their own opinions on how my career went at Arsenal. Mm. Um, but me personally, I felt I done well. Um, to break into a team that um, was winning every week, uh, winning trophies, um, and the sort of players that they was attracting and the team they had to even get on the field uh, amongst them great players was was an achievement uh, for me. It was, wasn't easy. Uh, and now I look back at my time and think, you know, there's things I could have done which, you know, might have um, helped me stay at Arsenal for longer. Mm. Uh, but all in all, I think it was a fantastic um, time there and you know for me being an Arsenal supporter it's, it's, you know you can't ask for, for no more playing and working with such great players and coaches I mean what was what was the invincible season like man I mean as a fan it just looked incredible so for a player yeah. being involved man it must have been incredible yeah it was it was amazing I mean trust me it was like in the locker room I tell everyone like this now that before games 
maybe on a Friday or Saturday going to games or traveling up to game, we kind of knew that we was going to beat the team that was playing against. Yeah. Like we had that feeling, you know, which was which is crazy if you think about it. Mm. Um, even if we went a goal down, we knew that we had like enough ability and the team had enough ability that we was going to score one more. Or mm. even if we was down the last couple of minutes, that we'd get a goal back no matter who we played against. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, it was like we always knew we was going to win kind of thing. Um, which in a team and training every day with, with the players, uh, you know, you felt secure. Um, and it just that winning mentality, even from training, it was, it was in, embedded in everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I had, a, I had your old teammate Senderos on here a week ago. Oh, yeah. he, he spoke really well, but he was talking about um, Thierry Henry and his attitude to winning and how like serious he took training every day, man. Like, was it, was yeah, it yeah. intense in training every day? Yeah, it was intense in training every day. Every day was intense. It wasn't one day that wasn't intense. Mm. Uh, and at the time, as a young player, you know, you felt that pressure. Um, and now you look at that pressure, you feel, wow, I wish I had that pressure now. But um, I think you kind of, you know, adapt to their style of it because that's a winning mentality. Yeah. Um, and that's why they're champions, you know. Um, yeah. That's why they won the amount of trophies and, and went the whole season unbeaten. Mm. Um, and I feel having that kind of player in there as well as, you know, like Patrick Vieira, it was, you know, you learn from that. And yeah. having that winning mentality in training took that right to game. And yeah. 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 You, even, even when the team scored against us, you could see the disappointment that, you know, we let a goal and we should be, you know, we should be beating these teams easy. With a clean sheet. I mean, Stan Kroenke, not the real Stan Kroenke, I'm sure, but in the comments, he <laughs> yeah. said, who is the best player you have played with? I'd say best player, i say, everyone asks me, I'd say Patrick Vieira. Um, yeah. Just because the way, yeah, just because the way he's um, on the field and off the field. Um, yeah. Just, you know, as a player, he is, everyone saw what, what he achieved and what he was uh, for Arsenal, what a main influence he was on the whole team. Yeah. Um, he looked after everyone, not just from the, the top players at Arsenal, from um, the likes of Thierry and Riyash Nicole, Sol Campbell, you know, the list goes on. Uh, yeah. But I feel he looked after the younger players also. Um, yeah. You know, Fabregas, uh, me and some of the other, Senderos and some of the other guys coming through. Um, so in that sense, he took a big responsibility, um, not just for the team, but uh, all the staff at Arsenal he looked after. Yeah. I mean, um, just wanted to quickly ask you, obviously, um, there was terrible news um, a while back that um, Jose Antonio Reyes had yeah, sadly know, yeah. passed away, man. A very good player. What, what was he like in the dressing room and, and on the pitch as well? He was a very quiet person. Um, it was probably mm. tough for him because uh, coming to England, he didn't speak any English. Mm. Um, so it was quite tough for him when he first came because he didn't speak um, a word of English. So he was kind of quiet. Um, but I think he'd done a lot of his talking on the pitch. Um, in training, he was, you know, his left foot was amazing. Like, he'd score mm. goals that you'd think, wow, what a finish. And he was fast. He had so much ability. Um, mm. And, you know, the, it was sad to hear the, the news about him, um, really, when I heard it. But um, I think he was great for Arsenal. Um, and it was sad that he didn't stay for longer and achieve um, more things with Arsenal. But uh, I think he was a great player and a great attribute to the team. Yeah, man, sadly missed. And um, just, quick, just quickly, Thierry as well, man. I mean, my personal favourite Arsenal player probably of all time, um, Henri. I mean, how good was Thierry Henri to, to be a teammate with? How good was he in training? No, in training, he was, he was a joke in training, trust me. Like, I mean, yeah. I had to defend against him a lot. Yeah, yeah. Him, yeah, and I think to myself, well, how am I going to stop this guy? Like, because he's fast <laughs> and strong. He's technically good. Um you know, like I'm like, well, how am I going to stop it kind of thing? You know, it was kind of, um, coming up against him was tough. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it was, it was tough. And he used to give defenders a nightmare in training and in games. Mm. Uh, but he had that winning mentality. You know, he always wanted the ball. I mean, sometimes yeah. I'd have the ball and I'd pass it to someone else and he'd be mad that I didn't pass it to him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, of course, because obviously he wants to, you know, get on the ball and, and do stuff and help the team, obviously. But um, I, think, I, I, I think it's great that he, we had... Thierry Arsenal, I think he kind of changed uh, Arsenal in that sense also. Mm. Uh, and, you know, even um, talking to some people, the Sox of Viennese, 
Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you know, that's, that's famous. That's thing. Thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah, and me seeing that, I've done the same. So, uh, <laughs> in that sense, uh, you know, you take little bits from him and I took a lot from him uh, trading-wise and uh, in mm -hmm. his personality. Um, and even just the way, for me, from the academy, looking at him, thinking, you know, this is what he does in training, this is what he wears in training. You know, if I do the same thing, you know, I might be in the first team kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, I kind of modelled myself on him, not totally on him, but um, I learned a lot from him. And having him at Arsenal, you can see why he's a legend um, and always will be a legend for Arsenal. So what was it like for you as a right back? Obviously, um, that team. I think we had Lauren at right back, who was he was obviously a very good player as well. Yeah. I mean, what was he like trying to get ahead of? Was he was he welcoming of the challenge from you, or what was he like? Yeah, Lauren was at first. He was obviously feel threatened, you know, because obviously mm. um, I was younger than than he was, and I was trying to take his position. At the end of the day, I'm trying to take his position. Yeah, um, but you know he was there, so I'm trying to work to see what he does and try and improve my game. Mm. How what he doesn't do, you know. So I was learning um, bits from him. But at first he wasn't welcoming. I'll be honest. But then after a while he was. Yeah, uh, um, which was great. Um, and then when he moved on, I kind of um, got my chance. Um, and then you know they brought in a buoy. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, they, when they brought Abu and Sagna, um, after me getting my chance, uh, I couldn't complain because you're bringing in two world-class uh, top defenders and probably done um, at the time more than what, you know, I had brought to the team. Um, mm. So, in that sense, even getting a chance to, to play as many games as I did for Arsenal, uh, I'm happy I achieved. Um, I wish I could have played more games. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, during my time, I, you know, I, I don't know what to say because, uh, like I said, playing, you know, soccer in the streets for or football in the streets as a mm. kid, you know, wearing the jersey, thinking, oh, one day mm. I want to be the first team, and um, yeah. you get, I got to play at Ivory, got to play at Emirates, so you know, it was a, it was a dream come true. Um, but yeah, it, it was tough. It was a tough challenge, but a challenge that I enjoyed. I mean, look, man, I played um, professional myself, but um, in the lower leagues. And I know even getting to that level is difficult. So for anybody like yourself who makes it to the very top, you know, you made over 30 appearances for Arsenal. I mean, you don't get there by fluke. Um, so you certainly had ability. Um, what what caused um, you to leave Arsenal then? And was it, was it Arsene Wenger or did you make the decision to move on yourself? It was kind of a bit of both. Um, I think just before I left, I played quite a few games and then I think it was the season um, just before I left, I think I only played like one game and I was always on the bench and um, for me, it was either a decision, am I happy just to sit at Arsenal um, and just say, look, I'm at Arsenal, I've mm. been a supporter for so many, so many years, am I happy just to sit there and just say that I play for Arsenal to everyone um, and not achieve stuff myself or do I go out um, and look for other opportunities and look for regular football. Mm. Um, and I spoke to, to Wenger about the whole situation. Um, and he was like, look, um, you know, he told me the situation. Uh, the two other guys will be ahead of me. And I think it's good that you go out, uh, you know, maybe loan or a transfer to, to somewhere where you're going to play regular football. And for me, I was like, yeah, I, I can't sit in the bench or on um, a Saturday in the stands, you know, wanting to play every week because... Mm. There's nothing more you want to do than training every every day and then playing on a Saturday. That's all you want to do. Yeah, yeah. So for me not to, to be able to do that uh, was hard. So I thought, you know what, it's this chance to, to go somewhere and, and play regular football. And um, lucky enough, uh, Gareth Southgate got in contact with Wenger and I went to, to Middlesbrough. Mm. Uh, so for me, that was great because it was a chance to play regular football um, and it at the time, it was a, a chance to develop my own game and, and mm. um, just play regular football, really. That's all I wanted was to play regular football and create my own path rather than just saying I'm an Arsenal player and, or a squad mm. player. I wanted to, to play regular football in as many periods as I can. I mean, something I wanted to ask you, a couple of questions about the Middlesbrough move. Number one, 
what was it like for you as a London boy uh, moving to the North East? Because, you know, I've been up there. It's a lot different to London, <laughs> bro. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Completely different. But oh, you know please. what kind of helped me is that I went on loan to Sunderland um, yeah. during, my time at, um, during my time at Arsenal um, when I first broke into the team. So I think that kind of helped. But yeah, yeah. I'll be honest, when I first went up there, it was the first time away from like home and away from London. I was kind of like, it's, it's, it's really different to, to London, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how it is down south. Um, but no, I, I easily adapted. Um, I knew one or two of the players, so it was quite good. And mm. I made close friends with um, a lot of people up there. And mm. uh, I'd say I was up there for a long time. So it, it, it kind of became a second home. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is a lot different to, to London. Like, um, a lot more slower, a lot more laid back. Uh, but um, in that sense, it was good because I was playing every week. So, and I got, I'd made really good friends with um, one of the players, Marvin Emness. So oh, in yeah. that sense, he become like a, a brother. So... We kind of helped each other through the whole process and, you know, we enjoyed our time up there and unfortunately we didn't get uh, back to the Premiership with the teams we had, but uh, it, it was tough, but it was a good time. So obviously your manager up there, Gareth Southgate, ends up becoming the England manager. I mean, did you, what did you see in him that made you think, you know, he could go on and maybe become England manager or what, what were his qualities as a, a manager? I was a great manager. For me, I say he's one of the best managers I, I have had. Um, yeah. Just for the way he treats every player. Mm. Um, and I think that kind of helps from his experience of being a player. Yeah. Um, he understands players. I mean, he was open with everyone. Um, you could go to him with anything. And I think he gave us the kind of freedom to play. And I feel like, you know, his methods in what he's brought to this England team, I think that's why you see... Um, how they're playing now. I think he's brought that and he had that um, at our time at Middlesbrough. Um, and as a team, we was all shocked and upset that he got sacked when he did at Middlesbrough uh, because mm. he was doing really well. Yeah. Um, but no, for me, you can see why he's England manager. And um, I mean, he wrote me a letter um, before he left and I feel like that's something um, that not a lot of managers do. Uh, yeah. As a person. Like, again, it was a really good uh, a nice touch um, from someone who d didn't need to do that, you know. So yeah, uh, was, he was a really good coach, and I really enjoyed, you know, working under him. And um, I thought he would have got another job after. Uh, yeah, it took a little while, but I guess his path was where he is now as the England manager. So briefly, I want to I wanted to ask you about your international career. Um, I see oh, yeah, you, yeah. you represented England at all youth levels. Um, yeah. Apparently, he was called up by Trinidad for the World Cup um, 2006. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you said no. Uh, and yeah. then and later on, you went you went on to play for them later on down the line. Um, so what was that? Yeah. Is that a decision you look back on and think, you know, it would have been good to go to the World Cup or was you waiting or hoping for the England call-up? I mean, at the t I say, yeah, I wish I would have gone before. Uh, mm. Knowing what I know now in football, I wish I would have said yes yeah. um, back then, but uh, it didn't happen. Um, and at the time, I was doing really well with England and playing in the first team for Arsenal. And um, I mean, you listen to rumours, you hear it to people gossip. And at the time, you know, I was trying to push to get into the England team, playing under 21s mm -hmm. and doing really well and playing regular there. So... Um, Having played so many years in the youth team um, for England, my goal was to get into the England national team, of course. Mm. Um, so that was my, my first thought. So when uh, Trinidad asked, do you want to go to the qualifiers? Do you want to go to the kind of World Cup? I was like, you know what, for me now to turn around and say uh, yes, after mm. not going through the qualifiers with them to just go to the World Cup, I thought at the time it wasn't fair um, to the yeah. players that have got the team so far, you know, so I said no, uh, which now I wish I didn't say no. <laughs> um, but luckily, um, later on um, down the road, a couple of years ago, I, I ended up playing for the national team uh, of Trinidad. Yeah. Um, they called me again and asked if I want to be a part of their new kind of setup um, and new challenges. And I, I accepted it straight away. Mm. Um, not just the fact uh, because nothing was happening with me in England, just the fact that I felt like I had to give something back yeah, um, and it was a chance to get to the highest possible international level. Really, to get back mm. on international stages is the highest level possible. And 
Um, you know, we had ambitions of getting into the World Cup. So I feel if I'm from that, from the beginning, right up until, you know, hopefully qualifying for the World Cup, then, you know, I can say I was there from the start, not just because they made the World Cup, you know? Yeah. Yeah, do you know, I actually, um, I played for Dominica a few times and uh, we, we trained oh, yeah. in that one time. So um, but it's a little bit different over there, man, them dusty pitches and that is, is a lot different. Yeah, to no, it's, it's crazy. No, I mean, people complain about the pitches in England. And I'm telling you, when you go over to like, um, the Caribbean or some South American places, I'm telling you, the atmosphere and, and some of the facilities and some of the, the pitches you're playing on, you won't even believe it. Like, it, it's crazy. I mean, I think yeah. we played in a World Cup qualifiers, I think the Caribbean Cup. And I think we yeah. played in a cricket field. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done the same. Like, the cricket pitch was literally in the middle in the of the middle. game. And you're like, yeah, yeah. And the coaches <laughs> used to say to us, try and avoid the middle of the cricket pitch because it was like hard concrete, like hard, yeah, hard yeah. surface. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, but how can you avoid that? You can't. Like, it's not possible. Mm. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, we played on it, so there was no complaining, you know? Um, yeah. And it's funny, you hear people complaining about pitches, you hear people complaining about the weather, you hear people complaining about everything. But I feel going through different experiences um, during my time, having good times, bad times, going through different experiences with the national team from youth level to mm. Trinidad, and going through... Uh, different countries say and play and I think I've experienced kind of a lot um, yeah so for me now I can't complain on any surface um, mm -hmm. any temperature any weather I mean I'll complain to myself and yeah, to yeah. some of my teammates but at the end of the day I've got a job to do and you just get on with it you know yeah but it's a real eye open I'm telling you it is and I, it's funny you said that because I remember I went to Dominica we played at um, the national stadium right and and it yeah. and like you said it's the cricket pitch as well and I'm playing centre midfield in that game. And the manager's yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. he's like, yeah, man, just try and avoid the pitch. I'm like, yo, it's in the middle of the park. Like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Like, yo, it's That's crazy. Like, I mean, it's like, you got to run around it. It's not possible. Yeah, man. But So what's it been like? Obviously, you're you're over there in America at the moment. Um, has that been a great experience for you in your career? Have you enjoyed it over there? Would you recommend it to players in England? I would recommend it to a lot of players in England. Um, yeah. I'd say especially players um, in England who are not sure of their next kind of step in yeah. um, English football, say, um, if they have the opportunity to come out to America and play, I think you should do it. Um, mm. And I feel uh, in the next couple of years as we go on, I think there'll be more players uh, trying to get out to America. It's not, people think it's easy to get out to America. It's not. It's probably yeah. the hardest thing to try and get into. But once you're in it, you'll enjoy it. Mm. Um, and you can see in the MLS that they say it's a retirement league, but it's not a retirement league. There's a lot of younger players now that are going into the MLS and trying to and play. And so um, for me, it was a great experience uh, mm. on the field. Off the field, of course, it's challenging. Uh, yeah. You know, being away from your family for however many months uh, and having them here and there was, was tough. But no, I really um, enjoyed my time. And um, I think that was more so to do with uh, being at Cincinnati, I mean, we got like 30 plus fans, 30,000 plus fans, you know, um, wow. nearly every week. Yeah. So going out to America, not expecting that was something amazing. And I kind of gave the love back for the game after mm -hmm. losing it, being out of it or being at certain clubs that I didn't even enjoy being at. I kind yeah, of yeah. enjoyed uh, getting that feeling again, you know. And I felt like when I was at Cincinnati, the atmosphere and uh, the team had like a European kind of vibe to it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I took I took to the to the fans and to the club um, really well, and you know uh, I left a good mark um, for for the team. So um, now they're doing well in in building a new stadium and stuff. So I'm glad that yeah. you know I was part of part of that and part of the history of the club. Because I see, was your last club in England was Dagenham and Redbridge, right? Yeah, it was Dagenham and Redbridge, yeah. Uh, yeah. I went to, the, I had a tough time at Millwall. Yeah. Um, for whatever reasons, I, it just wasn't a good fit for me. But, you know, I was there as a player and it wasn't a good fit for uh, a number of different reasons. But I went to Dagenham and Redbridge. Uh, it was a local club. Um, I had a child um, at the time, so that was, it was really close to me and close to home. So yeah. for me, it was, uh, I didn't have a club. Um, so for me to, to to play at Dagenham, a local team, and give me the opportunity to play again. Um, yeah. Uh, be seen again by everyone. Uh, yeah. You know, it wasn't 
of the money. It was just to be seen and, and just to show that I'm not giving up and that I can continue playing and playing at um, a good level. Was that John Steele? Yeah, it was John Steele um, was the manager. Yeah. Um, I remember um, Andre Brucard, who I was with. Oh, yeah. Team with. Yeah, knew I, was, I was just at home and I was just talking to him just in general. And he's like, why don't you come down and train if you're not doing anything? You know, just to keep fit, keep active, you know, rather than just running by yourself, why don't you come and, and train with the team? And he said he'll ask the coach and, and see what they say. And they said, yeah. So um, I went down and trained with them and I really enjoyed the training. Uh, played in like a friendly game and they wanted to, to take me on from there. So it was just like, you know, you play whenever you play. And, and mm. I got on with it. Really. Quite, I've only played in every game when I got there. Yeah, yeah. My mate, you know, the way uh, we played, and you know, my friend Andre was there, so that kind of helped the transition and helped uh, my time at Devon. What a player he is, by the way. I played against him years ago. I think he was. Oh, at no. what a player. Knox <laughs> County, centre mid, and he was. It was no, like a walk him. in the park, bro. It was like a walk no, in the park. You. I always said to him, I said to him, you should have come to America and played. I mean, we used to. Um, share a room in, in national team at Trinidad together and we used to chat all the time. We still talk now. Um, mm. He's like a really, really, really close friend, like a family member. Um, but no, I say to him all the time, I said you're probably one of the, uh, outside the, the, the top leagues, I say you're probably the best midfielder I've, I've played with. Um, mm. Always wants the ball, doesn't care um, what situation. And I feel in Trinidad, he was our main player. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I said, no, no, he was our main player and, and he made our team tick. Um, and for sure, um, I wish he could have played at a higher level, uh, but unfortunately it didn't happen. But no, nah, he, was, he was always such a player, such a player, trust me. Great talent. I'm just going to do a few questions um, from people. So, yeah, um, talking about Arsenal now, Shadow says, who would you bring in in the summer? The summer? Um, I mean, it's going to be hard, isn't it? Uh, you know, Arsenal don't yeah, really... I think it's going to be hard now with, with what's going on. I think it's going to be hard with what players will be available first off and if they can get the transfers done because of the whole situation. So I think we first and foremost have to see if the league's going to finish um, yeah. and what the transfer situation is going to be because, um, you know, if they're from Europe or some other places, are they going to be allowed to, to come over and sign? We don't know. Yeah. Um, but I think if, it's, if they can sign players, I think they should sign maybe a centre midfield player. Yeah. Um, I think Arsenal have missed that for a number of years now, so um, I think a centre midfielder would be a, a perfect fit for, for an Arsenal team. Or another I mean, we've never really replaced um, Vieira, have we, from your days being there? Nah, yeah, I think that's always said him, Fabregas, I mean, Gilberto. Fabregas, yeah. Um, like, also, we've never really, truly replaced. No. Um, Adam says, hey, Justin, do you miss playing in England and what league would you fit in right now? Um, yeah, do you miss playing in England? I'll be honest, no, I don't miss playing in England at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, if I'll from Redbridge, eh? from Dagenham and Redbridge to Miami, I don't think you're going to miss Dagenham too much, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, even, even at Cincinnati, I mean... Uh, I say to my family, I say, look, I could have been uh, probably League Two or League One or a Championship. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Um, at the time, there was no team in England that wanted me, so I took the opportunity to go to America. So um, that's the honest truth. There was no team in England that wanted me, so I still feel I can do a decent level at Championship level. Uh, yeah. People might have their own opinions otherwise, um, but no, I still think I can do a job in the Championship. But I don't miss miss playing in in England at all. I think. Um, it was a good move by me to come over to America and experience something different and having experienced that now I, I wouldn't want to come back to play um, I mean the stadiums the, the facilities uh, and just the, it was, it's just more I think for me it's, it's less stress less stress free yeah yeah and I can enjoy my game more here um, rather than you know uh, I'd say the 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 craziness of English football. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I've had many years in England for English football, so it's good to come away from it. Yeah. DJ K says, um, what is your worst memory in an Arsenal shirt? Oh, my worst memory of an Arsenal? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I've got a, a bad memory of Arsenal. Um, I've never been asked that question before. No. 
No, no, I've never been asked that question. Um, the worst memory of me and Arsenal, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, there were good times, man. Probably nothing bad think, going on. Yeah, I think during my time, you know what? I had too many um, great moments at Arsenal to have a, a bad moment uh, yeah. at Arsenal. During my time at Arsenal, we had some fantastic times and we had some... Uh, I had some challenging times as, as a player, but I wouldn't say there was one point in my time at Arsenal that was a bad time or my worst bad, time. Yeah. Um, Carol said, who was fastest, you, Thierry, Gavin or Theo? Because I heard you was pretty <laughs> quick, you know. I heard you was pretty quick when you were there and your brother as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is a big debate that a lot of people uh, don't know or might know. Uh, yeah. Thierry was fast. Theo was very fast. Mm. My brother now was really fast. Yeah, yeah. And I was just as fast. So, sprints... I would say I was, I'm going to be biased. I was the fastest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be biased. I was the fastest now. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I'll be honest. Um, when I was in the first team at my age, I was mm. fast. But I say it to everyone, I'm faster than my brother. But when he was my, when he was my age and sprinting, he, w- he would have been faster than me if we was twins. Yeah, so, yeah. Same age, yeah. 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 So you're quicker than all. He would never beat me in a race. He would never beat me in a race. But he was <laughs> faster than his age. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. So, so yeah. um, um, I think my brother's got the, the fastest time, I think, at Arsenal for the has like, sprint or something. Right. I think so, yeah. Um, Jay Augusta says, best attacker you've played against? Best attacker? I'd have to say um, Iron Robin. Robin? Yeah, he was Iron a problem Robin, yeah, at yeah. Therapy yeah. man. Yeah, it was, it was a huge, huge problem. And um, I remember talking to Thierry on me one time and asking him, um, you know, does he worry about any defenders or, you know, was his mindset going into games? And he used to tell me, why should I worry about um, other defenders when, you know, I'm confident that I'm better than them or, or um, they need to worry about me at the end of the day. I shouldn't mm. worry about them. They should worry about me. Yeah, uh, because I'm confident in my ability. I know what I bring to the team. And I know what I can do. So I don't worry about any defense, but they should worry about me. Yeah, of course. So I kind of tried to bring that approach to my game. As a but the one person that always used to cause me a problem and I always used to worry about was Iron Robin. Wow, that's and mad. That just because he was fast, he was direct, he was sharp, all left foot. But all left foot. No matter how many times he showed him on his right foot, he would always get back on his left foot, like yeah. always. And yeah, you just yeah. could not stop it. And for me, it was just, it, yeah, it was a huge, huge problem. It's mad when you watch them players, isn't it? Because a lot of people from the outside, they'll go, why don't you keep him off his left foot? He's all left foot. Nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, so, trust me. I mean, even now, I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting home sometimes. I'm saying, yeah, but you can't show him on his right foot. You can't show him on his left foot. You can't show him on his left foot. But having been in that position, I'm like, you can't stop it. Like, you can't yeah, stop yeah. it. It's yeah. like canoeing training. Um, yeah. And he used to do like this drag every time in training. And no matter who he was up against, if he wanted to do the drag, you could not stop him. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. You could not stop him. And, it, and it, that's why I feel the players um, are, you know, top players. Because no matter how many times you try and stop them doing what they're best at, they can do mm. it. And they, they can do it. Yeah, yeah. And they can do it, you know. So for me, Iron Robin, yeah, it was a huge problem. Yeah, he was a good player, man. Very good. Um, Robin said, How was Dennis Burkham off the pitch? He seemed like a nice guy. Really nice guy, Burkham. Really nice guy. Very, very funny character that not many people know. Um, on the field, he was quite quiet. Um, even training sometimes, he was quite quiet, but um, really, really um, nice, professional um, yeah. joker. Um, of a character and a really good player to, to have about um, what a player he was as well. But it was a yeah, unreal. Uh, last one. Uh, what have you made of Arteta's start as Arsenal manager? Uh, that that leads me into what I was going to briefly ask you about Arsenal now. And So what, what have you made of Arteta? I think it's a good attribute to have in the team. I think it's a great manager uh, to have now at Arsenal. Um, mm. For me, he knows the Arsenal system. Um, and I think having worked under Guardiola, and Guardiola having huge respect for him and not wanting him to leave, I think he will do um, great things for Arsenal. Um, I still think it's early days yet. Um, he's trying to get you know his philosophy and his way of playing 
uh, onto the team. And I feel like, you know, given time, I think he will do really well. Yeah. Uh, so I think it will take time, but I think he's a good person um, to lead the team uh, moving forward. Um, so I feel like, um, for sure, um, okay, some results haven't gone his way, but slowly you can see the way he wants Arsenal to play. And I feel like he'll slowly bring back, you know, like the Arsenal way of playing. The Arsenal way, yeah. Um, last one, sorry. Um, Jose Donko said, in your opinion, why have Arsenal regressed when it comes to competing and winning titles and Champions League? How do we get back to being contenders, even though the fans make of the lack of investment? How do we get back to the top, man, without spending all the money? Uh, it's, it's tough now because, you know, today now market is, you know, players are expensive and, you know, the big clubs are buying the, buying the players. Uh, and I, but I feel like Arsenal, uh, back in the day, didn't spend huge money uh, no, on players, they but they still don't well. Yeah. Um, they hardly spent any money on players. And I mean, if you look at the players they brought in, um, mm. how much they brought in, uh, and the players and the amount they spent, they didn't spend hardly any money. No. So, but, you know, Wenger got them playing a certain way and a certain style that, you know, no one could, uh, could compete against them, no matter how much they would cost. Mm. Um, so I think over time... Uh, I don't think Arsenal have to spend a huge amount of money. I feel it's just getting the players that they've got or the players that they bring in all on the right um, philosophy, the right mind frame, uh, getting to them to learn the Arsenal way, um, getting yeah. them to understand what it takes to win in the Premier League. Mm. Um, and I think maybe it might take a season, it might take a, two seasons, but over time I feel that Arsenal will slowly get back to be. Um, title contenders fighting for the Champions League um, and fighting for trophies, which is what you know every Arsenal fan wants and and knows that the team is capable of. Um, but it's we're in. I feel as an Arsenal fan, we're in a transition phase. So it's yeah. a time where we're trying to fit um, certain players, finding out their position, and and some players that might not be a perfect fit for Arsenal. So it's just working out um, the right player. Um, and the right model and and uh, player to bring in for Arsenal, um, you know, because I don't think Arsenal are going to go out and spend the sixty plus million on on players. So it's no. finding the right you know player at the right amount who's going to do the job that Arsenal need and fits into the Arsenal um, way of playing. I mean, when you was at Arsenal, I mean, players were desperate to play for Arsenal. You were lucky to be there. Yeah, yeah. Now, now we're constantly losing our best player. Now there's talk of Aubameyang leaving. Well, I mean, yeah. what, why are Arsenal now this selling club? You know, Sanchez went, Van Persie went, Fabregas, you know. Why have we become a selling club? I just feel this. Um, I just feel that... Arsenal now, is, like I say, is in a transition phase and players don't know um, the direction that I think the club wants to go in. Um, mm. You know, they, I think some players feel like Arsenal should be spending a whole heap of money, um, like, you know, Man City or United or, um, you know, some of the other teams um, across the world um, yeah. are spending money on big players um, to, 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 to make a team win. Um but at the same sense, Arsenal have never really done that. Mm. Um, so that's not the Arsenal way. Um, but I feel that a lot of players have come into Arsenal thinking, you know, back in the day it was the team that everyone wanted to be at. But now it's like, I don't know. I don't know whether the ambition of the players are matching what the club's ambitions are. I, I really don't know. I just don't know why. Players who say they want to come and be part of Arsenal and then after a year or two want to leave. Um, mm. That I don't understand, but um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I hope Aubameyang stays because he's a top yeah. striker and a striker that fits the Arsenal, Arsenal you know, mould. So I think if we can build a team around him and some of the other guys, I think we'll be, we'll be strong. Um, but I feel players nowadays don't want to wait... Um, for things to improve, they want results straight away. Straight away, yeah. Um, as a fullback yourself, um, Hector Bellerin, he's had a lot of criticism in the past couple of years. I mean, yeah. do you look at him now and think, you know what, if I was 10 years younger, man, I could be in that team now at right back? Or, you know, does he get a hard time that he shouldn't from the fans? Or 
What's your thoughts on Bellerin? Yeah. I think he's a good player. I think he's a great player. I think he's done well for Arsenal. Um, yeah. And I think he's coming to Arsenal at a time where it's been very difficult. Mm. Of course, they're in a transition phase and a lot of players are coming or going and no one really knows Arsenal's best. If you are a Arsenal team, no one really knows their best team. No. Um, so I feel he's coming at a difficult stage. I mean, I think he's done really, really well. Um, what a lot of people got to take into account is that he's had some serious injuries. Yeah. Um, and I feel that takes a long time to get back to, to your best. Um, and I feel like slowly over time, he will, he will get back to his best and, and be the performer. You know, we see in some games from him, some games he's unbelievable. You know, mm. his pace, his passing, um, and what he brings to, to Arsenal at a right back position is, is what Arsenal need. Mm. Um, so I feel... That a lot of that a lot of fans maybe might be, um, you know, not taken to well, but you know, at the same time, he's been injured for a long time. It it takes a little while to to gain that confidence again mm. uh, after being out injured for so long. But now, for sure, uh, for me, he's a perfect fit for the fullback position for Arsenal, especially yeah. the way they want to attack. Him. So with the attacking you fullback. need someone like him. Uh, yeah, with that attacking four, yeah, you need someone like that. Because Arsenal's always had that. Arsenal's always had the, the fullbacks that like to, to bomb forward. So mm. um, I think he fits out. Um, just last question. From you know, from the time when you obviously first broke through at Arsenal to the time you left, did you notice a change in the attitude and the mould of Arsenal? Because when you was, you know, first at Arsenal, we were we were more pace and power, Vieira. Cole, Omri, to the time you was leaving was more like Fabregas, Haleb and, and those, you know, the tiki-taka sort of style of football came in. Yeah. Do you think, do you think we suffered because of that? Because I always felt like Wenger was chasing the Barcelona way a little bit and I, and I don't think we ever fully, you know, got that to a T, you know. I think we were better as a as a pace and power kind of team. Did you, did you notice a difference? Yeah, I kind of noticed a difference. Um, and I think that kind of changed with the kind of players that were then brought into the club and the players that mm. left. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we lost players one by one. Um, mm. And we replaced them one by one by different types of players. Um, so I think that kind of changed the way Arsenal played. Um, and you could, you, could, you could see that easily. I mean, if you lose... Uh, Thierry Henry's pace and stuff, then your game kind of changes because mm. you're losing that place, pace. Um, and some of the other players, you know, Ashley Cole left, so um, yeah. we had cliche. Right? So, I mean, there's still pace there, but I feel over time, Arsenal lost the, the speed and pace side of it and brought in players more, you know, technique wise um, mm. that maybe keep the ball better, you know, like you say, the tiki taka style, like. Uh, Barcelona, so that kind of changed, I think, the way Arsenal then looked at certain players. Whereas I feel now Arsenal kind of going back to to the days of when we was winning games with like the likes of you know Thierry Henry to say, um, and the speed of play and the speed of attack, um, bringing in more players with pace um, rather than you say the the you know the the less speed of the the tiki taka more. Mm. Um, Tech passing side of it, I think we're bringing in more um, speed based players, which I feel the way the game is, is evolving. Um, yeah. But no, for sure, I saw a huge change. But I think that is because the, the, the players that left and then the players yeah. that were brought in, I think we kind of changed. Um, and I feel we had to change the style of play because the players we brought in couldn't do the same as what the players were there before. You know, that, that wasn't their DNA and that wasn't their style mm. of play. So I think. Arsene Wenger done a great job, um, obviously not getting the same results, but I feel he done a great job in the players he brought in and, and changing the way the team played because he couldn't play the same way. It wasn't possible because the players weren't the same. So I feel he changed um, the style of play to fit the players that he had and, and that he brought in. Yeah. And Wenger, what was, what was Wenger like to play for? Great, great. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, um, he didn't say anything. Well, no. well, he didn't say much before the game and after the game, he didn't say anything. Win, lose or draw, he didn't no. say anything. But uh, <laughs> for me, like I think for me, it's like, you know as a person, if you've had a good game, if you've had a bad game. Yeah, of course. You know, sometimes of course. you don't need a manager to come in screaming, shouting, telling you mm -hmm. you're this, you're that. 
or you had a bad game or the team had a bad game. So, and I feel that, you know, as a team and as individuals, we knew if we had a bad game, if we had a good game. So he didn't need to come in and tell us. Um, and mm. I think the majority of the time is that he knew we was going to win. So I think he had that confidence that Crazy, we would go out. Yeah, he, we would go out and do the job. And I feel he gave us a lot of responsibility uh, yeah. to do so. But I mean, even training with him and his attention to detail um, was, was second to none. And I mean, just used to walk around and just watch his training and just say little bits of detail, the little bits of detail that um, I look back on and think about now. And I'm like, you know, you look at me, you think, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. And yeah, yeah. it's just like his mind is just football. It's just football, football, football. That's all he would think about and all he would talk about. Um, he knew every player, knew their best ability, even every player in the, the first team uh, mm. and youth team. He knew who was going to be the next big thing, how um, you was going to develop as a player. And he even knew like what age groups from each position have you know, longer careers and stuff. He just knew mm -hmm. everything to do with football and individuals yeah, yeah. he knew. Um, so his knowledge uh, in, football, in football and for Arsenal was, was unbelievable, you know? Yeah, man. Well, just trying to wrap it up. Really appreciate you coming on, man. Um, no, it's a pleasure any time, man. Quality to listen to your stories, man. I mean, you know, it's, it's very easy to forget, um, you know, certain players and the career they've had. But, you know, looking back, you've had a... You've had a great career. You've played all around the world. You played international football. I mean, he's still playing for Trinidad now. He's still like available for selection now. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still eligible to play. I mean, I'd, I'd love to get back into the national fold, of course. Um, mm. But first and foremost, I need to to work uh, and get in this club, Miami club of football, uh, yeah. up and running. And um, it's kind of a new adventure for me now. So mm. I'm working more off the field, uh, on yeah. the field also, because I want to try and play for hopefully uh, four or five more years if I can, you know. Um, yeah. But um, I'm gearing more towards helping um, this team, Miami Club of Football, um, achieve great things and get into the USL and establish their team uh, and be known all over, really. So um, we'll be looking out for hopefully some Arsenal players later on, you know. Yeah, for um, real. Get right, yeah, I'm still, I'm, 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 I still want to play uh, yeah. for the national team. I still feel I can do a good job at international level so yeah, yeah I'm, if they can me i'm ready yeah man big up everyone in the comments thanks for your questions everyone tuning in after thanks for tuning in big up justin check him out on instagram are you on twitter as well people check you out yeah on twitter, yeah i'm starting my own youtube channel everything man so oh, yeah. Um, I'm starting, but yeah starting up a little um you got merchandise as well physio thing as well with um one of the guys i used to um work with he's uh physio keeping me healthy and active uh, yeah. and helping me play for you know many years so we're setting something up now so uh, yeah. we're in the process of doing like a physio um, player interaction so that will okay. be coming to, to everyone soon as well so yeah I'll be keeping checking out I on you keeping uh, Arsenal TV of course and, and yeah. seeing what you're doing on your YouTube channel so keep it going man keep up the good work yeah I appreciate that everyone take care stay safe thank you take care